In today's video, I'm going to be changing the aircon condenser on my 2008 Smart for 2 451. Hello and welcome to another video from Auto Night. Now I've been talking about replacing this aircon condenser for a while now and as spring is hopefully just around the corner, now's a good time to do it. I ordered the part from Autodoc, it's a Delphi component, it was about 88 quid, not big money for a component that's around 250 from Smart Mercedes main dealer. The part is right here and it's arrived really well packaged. It's effectively a box in a box and uh, I will unbox it now. And here it is. One nice new shiny aircon condenser. And for anyone interested, here are the details on the box. It's a Delphi component. Oh, made in China, that's a shame. Now I only recently made a video on front panel removal on these cars so I'm not going to go over that again but if you click the card in the top right corner you will be able to see a video with step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove the front panels from these cars. Now the front panels are off, you can see where the condenser is located in here. Now to get the condenser out, we do need to remove this entire front panel assembly, which involves removing quite a few components such as the scuttle, headlamps, front crash bar. It looks worse than it is. Let's start with the headlamps. They are held in by three T25 screws. It's then just a case of disconnecting the connectors, side lights and dips and main. Repeat on the other side. Now I've come up against a slight problem on this side in the sense that this vehicle must have had a previous knock because someone's repaired this headlamp and it's got this staple arrangement where it's been melted and stapled and that thing that just fell on the floor was the lower bracket so I need a new headlamp on this side this, this headlamp has, uh, has been damaged let's disconnect it anyway We'll look at this later on in the video and I'll explain what's happened here. Next, let's remove this scuttle. Again, it's T25s. Most of the fixings on the front of these are T25s, the occasional T30. So we'll get this undone. Now contrary to popular belief, the wiper arms do not have to be removed to remove the scuttle because Smart have included these little detachable pieces here which makes removal possible with the wipers in place. The scuttle lifts away and you must disconnect the washer jet here. And then these little plastic pieces can be removed. 
little bits of smart everywhere. Now in a recent video where I covered the windscreen leak issue that I had, I talked about an area here that can block up. And again, this is the kind of one way valve thing here, which allows water to naturally pass down and exit under here. And then inside here, which is the heat heater inlet, should water get in there, it's very difficult to see, but right back there in the corner is the bung. So it just gives it some context from my other video. This little piece comes off, and there you can see the slit there, which is the one-way valve. It's not completely one way, but it's designed to let things out, but not back in. That's the drain. I'll clean this up really well, because the uh, auto glass guy cleaned it last time, uh, but I can still see a bit of mud, so that will be pristine when that goes back in. Now whilst the wipers don't need to be removed to remove the scuttle, they do to be able to remove this front panel because the main front panel extends all the way up here, but well, all the way down here it is this whole assembly. So the wipers will have to be removed as will the crash bar. I'm just marking where the lower edge of this wiper would sit so they go back in the same place. Anyone who's watched my other videos will know that this is something I always like to do. These wiper arms are held on with a 13mm nut and they should, once the nut's removed, come off quite easily because they've recently been off. But if there are any issues getting them off, then a wiper arm puller, much like this one, makes very light work of it. This isn't actually coming off as easily as I expected. I'll try giving it a tap, if not I'll have to get the puller on it. There we go. This side's being a little devil as well, so I'm going to get the puller on that. Things are all starting to look a bit bare now. Now I know this car has had a really minor knock here at the front and it's only affected plastic, it hasn't affected anything structural at all or even the crash bar here. It just broke off the headlamp mounting brackets and you can see someone's attempt at fixing that headlamp to this panel but with these staples that kind of melt into the plastic. It is quite a commonly used te technique not one that I like very much. So I know that there's been some damage here. I think that might be what damaged the condenser, which might be how it lost all its gas. And I also know that this bit at the bottom here is broken. Now a new panel, new front panel, is over 200 quid, even for a second hand one on eBay. Now, whilst anyone who watches my videos will know I'm certainly not averse to spending money on my cars but I don't throw money at them unnecessarily and I don't think that it's worth spending 200 250 quid on a whole front panel on this when it's just a case of fixing this small bit that's broken here unless I find any more damage when I get this panel off completely but we'll find out very shortly removing this polystyrene piece makes it a little bit easier to access the bolts and it just unclips like that this bolt doesn't have to be removed, as you'll see it's not holding it on. But you've got three each side. Which is very hard to see, just under there. Again, the reason I took off the polystyrene foam is because it then gives us access through this hole here to get to the bolt in there. Repeat on the other side. This top bolt also holds the horn in place.
just put the horn in there. And this now lifts off. I'm now starting to see a bit more damage, which is concerning. I can see it's fractured here and here. Let's see how bad it is when the whole thing is right off the car. Next we can remove this little air duct here. It's just plastic and it just fits into some slots. It's very easy to remove. Next this redundant fog light wiring needs to be unslotted from there and this clip removed. Same on this side. There is a small clip here that secures the wheel arch liner to the front panel. That piece is missing on this side, so this is just flapping about in the breeze. That's now removed. And further fixing points for the front panel to the body, got a bolt either side here, again that's a 12. And these ones down here. Now in order to separate this from the radiator and condenser assembly there are just a couple of bolts here that need to be removed. These are eights. If we don't undo these it wants to take the radiator assembly with it when we remove it. Which is not the idea, we want that to be left behind. These bolts don't have to be fully removed because it's a slot, you can just loosen it. And the same on the other side. Just loosen this. And then the panel can be moved away without bringing the radiator with it. And finally this panel is attached to the under tray with a cable tie. I know this wouldn't have been uh, Smart's intended method. But it's what mine's got. It would be a bolt. If the remainder of this was actually there, it would bolt through this hole. The other side is the same. I mean, none of this is really serious because it's just plastic stuff, but it does all cost money. Still, it's better than a car being damaged structurally, I suppose. It was probably a really low speed knock. Time to get this front panel off now. It's going to be lifted over the wiper. Spindles. Right in the centre, under here, there's a T30 that needs to be removed. Who knew that little devil was hidden in there? There we go, that was the only thing stopping the whole thing from coming off. As we were. Now yeah, the only thing we've got here is a little temperature sensor. which we remove. Now this panel is free. Now this video is becoming more about the front panel than I had intended, considering this was meant to be about the aircon condenser. But looking at this, I can see what's happened here. So it's obviously sustained impact. This is detached, which is potentially repairable, but there is a bit missing. That piece there is missing from here, and that's what fixes the wheel arch liner to it. Something's broken off here too, with some sort of support. So it's a bit shabby. I'll have a think on this. Meantime, back to the condenser. So now we have an extremely naked looking smart. You can really see how it's put together now. And 
a really good view of the condenser which is really accessible now so it's time to change that so just a few precautions here when working on air conditioning systems vehicles of this age usually have R134A as the refrigerant R12 was used back in the old days way back in the 80s it's banned and it's better actually and produced better better results in terms of cooling but R134A is, is what vehicles of this kind of era use most vehicles do you do need to be cautious it does need to be reclaimed you can't just go undoing components or any gas that's in there will escape to the atmosphere and that's not really permitted uh, the idea is it's reclaimed using a machine I used to operate such a machine quite a lot uh, I was always replacing aircon components and uh, reclaiming and recharging systems with the correct amount of gas I don't have that equipment with me I know for fact that there's nothing in this at all these little valves here where you hook up the equipment and they're a bit like bicycle valves different size obviously a little piece inside there now I know for the fact there's nothing in this whatsoever don't do this at home because this will come out there's a frozen liquid if you do this and it's charged but this isn't there's nothing in it systems discharged so I can safely remove this component but it can cause like freeze it freeze burns uh, that the gas when it comes out as a liquid so best definitely best avoided leave that bit to a specialist it's not much holding this in really here's the connection and it's just clipped in and then it slots in at this end so let's crack on with it so the actual plumbing if you like the pipes where they join this condenser are held in place by this 10 mil nut which is undone these pipes can then be disconnected this unclips and is removed how about that all those body panels coming off just to do that it's unreal isn't it this is a great opportunity to inspect the radiator which looks absolutely fine okay so old versus new I have compared them and dimensionally they are the same so that's good now when I was looking for this part there were quite a few variations I'm just going to remove these seals the variations seem to be around the size of these attachment points for the pipes so I'm just going to check old versus new to make sure they are in fact the same I have got new seals as well from the dealer as it would be crazy to refit those old seals same I'm happy that they're the same I've worked with certain manufacturers where the new components used to come completely filled with oil it's special aircon pag oil uh, and sometimes they used to be absolutely full of it and I'm not sure if this one has any in it. It would seem not. But if components ever do come completely filled with oil, it's important to drain it out. Now different manufacturers give different quantities of oil that has to be added during the recharging process, depending on which components have been replaced. You might have a certain quantity of oil that you have to add if you replace a condenser or a compressor or the evaporator and that information is usually available on the database when you work for a main dealer and you just check for the given car. So I'm now going to fit the O-rings over these pipes. I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, oil onto them as well just to lubricate them to help them to seal. I don't have any new pad oil but there's a little bit around there that I can use to smear. Yeah. 
The O-rings are fitted, a little bit of pack oil has been applied to them so they're not dry. And time to fit it. Line up the pipes and slide them in. Let me get this 10 mil nut back on here. That kind of pulls the bracket in, but we still want to make sure it's aligned. Okay, so it's all back in, clipped nicely into place here and here, and all reconnected with this 10 mil bolt retightened. Connection secure o-ring seated everything's back together and now I've got to decide what I'm going to do with this now this component is it's not even plastic it's fibrous it's a strange substance and it's clearly broken so I've looked on eBay and they're most of them are around 250 quid for this panel it's not structural so to speak and I think I might be able to do something with it and I know I have got to have a headlamp and that's going to be uh, the cost. So I'm going to see if I can fix this back together. It might not look pretty but no one's ever going to see it. And yes I know this bit's missing here. But I've driven along quite happily for the last year. Unaware. And it's not causing any problems. Just a shame, I would be happier if I could change it, but I just don't think I can justify spending that kind of money on a car that is hardly ever used anyway. Okay, so I have effected some kind of a repair to this. I've used my glue gun, that's drying quite nicely. I've fitted a couple of plates this side, just to reinforce it. While that dries, although I think I'll leave them there and I'm going to spray the whole thing black. It's not beautiful, it's not pretty, but it does the trick. I had all sorts of ideas about getting nice pieces of sheet steel and shaping it in all these pieces here and drilling it. Um, but in the end, I couldn't get any sheet steel or anything at short notice, so I just got these little repair plates um, and that should do the trick. Yes, we're still missing this piece, but hey, we live with that. see the repaired area with a glue gun and some satin black. My next concern is going to be getting hold of a headlamp, a near side headlamp. The headlamp's bad. Now as I mentioned earlier, the mounting brackets on the headlamp have been glued back onto the lamp. And not only that, the lamp it's actually completely smashed under here. I mean, who knew that this was going on under there all this time and I had no idea. So I need to get a new one. So I've had a look on eBay and they seem to be about 80 quid for a second hand one. Now, ideally I'd like a new one. So I have had a look on Autodoc, but even for a sort of unknown brand, they're about 160, 180 quid. And that's a lot of money for just a pretty standard sort of headlamp. It's not like it's a Xenon or anything. But uh, I'll, I'm going to have to work on that and find a way. This one will not be going back onto the car in its current state. And I will be needing to source a replacement one way or the other. So this is going to have to be it for today. Because we're running out of daylight. It's been a long day. A bit disappointing with all the broken parts. I wasn't expecting that. But sometimes that's just how it goes. I'm at a convenient stopping point though front panel is ready to go back on the front of the car is all has all been cleaned in even more exposed areas I know I cleaned it last time when the panels were off but now I've taken more off there's even more to clean and I've really got in there and uh, made sure it's as clean as can be I can't state enough how glad I am that there's no structural damage 
it's just plastic. And in my garage it looks like a smart breaker's yard. So I'm now off to have beer and curry with my friends and this will be continued on another day.